Xbox Series S owners could be forgiven for thinking they purchased a console that would provide the next-gen gaming experience on a budget. Most probably bought the console as a second console to supplement their main gaming PC or PS5. But for others such as myself, we made the purchase at a time when there was a serious shortage of the Series X. And to be fair, I haven't regretted that purchase for the most part. You see, although the Series S is weaker compared to its much more powerful counterpart, the Series X, it's still capable of running games at 120 FPS at the cost of resolution, which is a sacrifice I was willing to make if it meant that I could choose between a performance and graphics mode. So when I first heard about Remnant 2, I was extremely excited to play it. A third person shooter with Souls-like mechanics, it sounded too good to pass. I haven't played the first one, but I thought I'd pick this one up given the hype surrounding the game. So when Gunfire Games announced that Remnant 2 would run only at 30 FPS on the Series S, it was a shock to the system, to say the least. 30 FPS in 2023? You've got to be kidding me. I was so disappointed that I considered cancelling the pre-order but then I insisted on trying it out and seeing how the game plays out. Now before we get to the gaming experience of Remnant 2 on the Series S and whether you should buy it if you're still on the fence, I have a few things to add regarding the Series S. Yes, the Series S is significantly weaker than the Series X. Its GPU operates at 30% the power of a Series X, but regardless of this, the Series S is still capable of running at a minimum of 60 FPS in most games. So why is it that Remnant 2 is running at 30 FPS? Is it simply lazy of the developers to not add a 60 FPS mode? To answer these questions, we have to look at the limitations of Unreal Engine 5 and its nanite technology, as this is what this game is running on. Unreal Engine 5 is already in use in games such as Fortnite, which can run at 120 FPS on the Series S. And if you're interested in more on this topic, there's a great video by the Xbox tester who explains why this is the case. And I've linked the video in the description below. So he explains that if Epic is capable of developing games in Unreal Engine 5, which is optimized to run at the minimum of 60 FPS, then all developers should be able to. So is this just a case of laziness for a lack of better terminology? Well, maybe not. It could be the case that Gunfire Games has been asked to release this game in an unfinished and poorly optimized state to meet deadlines or to meet their release date. This is a common ploy used by publishers today in order to ship games according to a tight deadline and then provide performance patches later on to iron out performance issues incrementally. The game was designed with upscaling in mind and not a native resolution. And even running this on a high-end PC with native resolution would lead to suboptimal sub 60 fps frame rates something that the devs have confirmed in a technical subreddit post and they said we've heard from a few folks about the game's overall performance we're definitely going to be rolling out performance updates after the game's launch but for the sake of transparency we designed the game with upscaling in mind so if you leave the upscaling settings as they are you can hit reset defaults to get them back to normal you should have the smoothest gameplay and so on but this is obviously for pc but this implies to me anyway that this game has been rushed to meet its release date which has left some players very frustrated. But it is what it is and hopefully they will release performance updates at a later date. So what is the gaming experience like on the Series S at 30fps and at a max resolution of 900p? And if you'd like to see more of an in-depth video on the technical performance of this game, check out the video in the description by Digital Foundry. Performance wise the game runs smoothly. The graphics aren't that great, but what can you expect at a resolution of 900p? Motion blur has been turned off on the Series S, so if you're a fan of motion blur, there is no option to turn it on. If you're not, then it's not an issue. It took me a while to get used to 30fps, having played mostly on the 120hz setting for most other games. If you suffer from motion sickness, I'm afraid this will not help. If you don't, you should be fine playing at 30fps. Sometimes it feels quite janky, but if you've just made the upgrade from say an Xbox One to the Series S, you probably wouldn't notice much difference. The gameplay isn't the worst, but I feel like in areas where the game drops below 30 FPS, it would be a problem considering this is a shooter at the end of the day. Your reaction to things moving on the screen and attempting to shoot them and the timing matters, especially in boss fights. So should you buy it? If I was thinking objectively, then I would say no. Not yet anyway. 
I would wait until a performance patch to see if they're able to optimize this game to run at 60 FPS and I would even take a hit on the resolution if it meant I had that option. Just having that option would be nice. The game isn't capable of running at a locked 60 FPS even on the Series X or PS5 as it drops due to its poor optimization, but that's still better than the 30 FPS and sub 30 fps in some cases on the series s if however you're not bothered by frame rate issues and you're happy with 30 fps then go ahead as from the brief amount of time i've played this game you can already tell that it will be one of the best games of the year undoubtedly your other option is to upgrade to the series x but i can imagine that's not feasible for everyone anyway guys thanks for watching let me know what you guys think and if you've already bought this game on the Series S, what's your experience been like? I'd like to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thanks for watching and if you like more Remnant 2 content, consider subscribing to the channel.